All right, let's have some fun with the scorpion. One more mag. Heck yeah. <laughs> this thing will really lay down some lead. Well, guys, welcome back. This is Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888. Today we're going to be talking about CZ Scorpion. This is the Evo 3 S1, basically third generation Scorpion. We'll talk a little bit about that as we go. Not third gen for this design, but the, the Scorpion line of guns. Really, really interesting overall setup. I'll tell you what. This gun has a heck of a lot going for it. We'll talk a little bit more as we go, but these things are very modular, easy to field strip and disassemble, easy to deal with. Um, this one is an SBR, so it's got their factory folder on it. And uh, really, really nice little setup here. Um, it folds and collapses, so you got multiple positions. Now, I decided to draw my magazines from a vest because I just want, want to kind of get a feel for kind of that type of use. You know what I mean? Duty use, life and liberty, defense. And uh, I tell you what, this particular gun has a heck of a lot going for it. Nine millimeter, 30 round mags. You can get 20 round mags, 10 round sticks. Magazines are somewhat available and pretty inexpensive when you can find them. They usually retail for about 20 bucks. So that's one nice thing is uh, the mags are definitely on the uh, inexpensive side. It's a blowback. You got rails all around it, top rail, side rails, low rail on the bottom. Uh, the muzzle device is 18 by one. So a little bit odd for what a lot of American shooters come to expect. From what I understand, the newer Scorpions that have been coming out or are going to come out are gonna have a half by 28 thread. That way you can keep it nice and short if you wanna run direct thread or if you wanna run a nice uh, small tri-lug adapter. Now this gun has a tri-lug adapter on it. I bought this from Manicore Arms. Uh, the price was pretty reasonable on the adapter, uh, but this goes from 18 by one to a tri-lug. It adds a little bit of length, but you guys might recall the SHOT Show video we did this year where we talked about the carbine version of this gun that's coming out and the fore end and the rail assembly and everything that's on the carbine from what I understand at in some way shape or form will be able to be dropped onto this gun so for some of you guys that want to run like maybe one of the Omega K's or one of the little short cans with the rail kind of covering up the can you can do that and and cosmetically it'll have I guess a more appeasing look to some of you guys that are having to run the adapters on it only a minor detriment though I would say that the uh, the firearm definitely has more going for it than against it uh, we are going to run it suppressed uh, for you as well uh, with a little bit of Freedom Munitions Hush ammo here, 165s. What I was running in the intro there is a little bit of a Gila 124 grain. I've got piles of that stuff laying around. I've actually got quite a bit on my, <laughs> on my uh, carrier here. I'm running these Tactical Taylor mag pouches. These are actually universal subgun pouch that they make. Uh, this is from our radio. I don't have it on me. And then this is a little multi-tool pouch. I always like to keep a multi-tool on my carrier so this is not really the way you'd shoot three gun or anything like that but i kind of like it it's just kind of nice to have something that's ready and i don't have i don't have something like this generally set up with like armor in it i like to just run it 
to just draw from and it's great to just practice you know being on the move or stuff like that um, in terms of the gun it ships with backup um, metal sights that get the job done they, they're definitely nice but obviously this gun originally shipped as a pistol and that's really the only way I, I know they're going to be shipping the carbine soon this year and everything but right now the pistol is about the only configuration you can get it in but as you'll see in a moment in terms of the disassembly it is stupid easy to make this thing into an SBR. I mean, it is so stupid easy. Just apply your tack stamp, get it back in, and it's just a little button right here you push in, the old back plate slides off, bam, pop your stock on there, and there's nothing to it. Now, one thing I will say about SBR in this, one minor little detriment that I had, and I guess for CZ it's probably a good thing for them, but uh, I had a very difficult time locating the 922R stock set for this thing. I ended up having to go on Gunbroker and pay out the nose for it, and uh, which is fine. I guess it's kind of a supply and demand sort of thing. But I paid almost 60% over suggested retail to get the stock kit. Not that CZ doesn't want to make them quick or anything like that, but I think the biggest thing is they're just, they're making them as quick as they dang can, and they're trying to keep up with the demand on this thing. Um, to some folks, I mean, the magazine compatibility, some people want a little carbine or something uh, that can run Glock magazines. It is a proprietary magazine. That might throw some people off. For me, I don't really care. If you run an MP5 or whatever you're running, you're still gonna have some type of dedicated magazine for it. So the fact that the magazines are so ex inexpensive kind of offsets some of the previous trouble that I had in terms of getting uh, you know, the stock set for it. Uh, there is 90, uh, 922R compliance to contend with, so it's got a US-made grip you have to change out, uh, follower, uh, the follower, base plate, some trigger components, the stock, you have to be able to meet the parts count, so it's a whole 922R kit you have to buy to actually SBR it. There are other, uh, are other options out there in terms of some people run like the AR adapters for like an AR stock, you can get an arm brace adapter for them, but I didn't really want to do that. I wanted something that, was, that would pay homage to the original, you know, real deal Czech machine gun. Uh, you know, I wanted the original look. You know, a guy that is a collector or somebody that's into Cold War or, or let's just say Comblock style weaponry, they want the real deal. They want it to look as close to the original as possible. So, um, you know, the Scorpion, a lot of people say, oh, CZ Scorpion, I've heard that before. Well, the original Scorpion, you guys are probably familiar I've shot a lot of the originals, but it's a little 32 ACP, uh, you know, stamped receiver, little folding wire stock, very lightweight, fast cycling, and very reliable submachine gun. Great for personal protection, everything like that. CZ has also brought in some of them that feed 9mm Makarov. So you can get the Scorpion in a 32 ACP, you can get it in a 9x18, and then now I'm assuming where the Evo Evolution 3 would be. The third version obviously being this wildly new polymer wonder here in 9mm Luger. So uh, there is a lot of polymer in the construction of the firearm, aluminum. The, it's actually, the weird thing about it, I was commenting to some friends of mine earlier when we were shooting it a bit, and uh, I mentioned that the, the construction almost reminds you of a G36 in a lot of ways. It has that almost kind of G36 feel to it, lots of polymer. Um, but all the metal in the areas where it really counts. The charging handle can be swapped out to either side of the firearm with relative ease. Um, very simple there. The disassembly, as you'll see in a moment, is extremely simple. We'll get that apart in a moment. We're running an Aimpoint T2 Micro and a little low profile uh, LaRue Tactical uh, mount. You know, makes for quick and easy, uh, you know, repeatability if you want to pop it off and play around with optics like we're known to do. But we're gonna shoot the gun a little bit more. I'm gonna throw a suppressor on it, show you how quiet this little devil can be. Now I notice that there's not really a lot of uh, impact shift with the suppressor, as long as you clock it in the same place every time. That's generally gonna be just about any suppressor, okay? I'll tell you what, I'll grab some subs here off my, out of my pouch, and uh, we'll have a go of it. All right, so this is Freedom Munitions Hush. 165. Let's hear how quiet this little guy can be. We got something special planned for later in the video, so make sure you don't miss that. All right, let's uh let's be quiet here.
My first malfunction I've ever had in this gun right there on film. Uh-oh. All right, let's try for some deliberate shots. I'm trying to run the gun kind of fast and moving around a bit. I know I'm in a stationary position because we're filming, but one thing I like a lot about the, the Scorpion is that it lends itself extremely well to just running around and tearing things up. Uh, we've been kind of, you know, over at my house, we set up kind of like a little three gun uh, setup. You'll probably see a little bit of it in the future, but in that setup, I've been kind of running around the yard and just trying to, you know, train on my feet a little bit more and get out there and, and just shoot more. And uh, it's really fun. I was out in my yard running around with this thing the other day. In fact, later in the video, just stay tuned. We might uh, break out some night vision with this thing and uh, get into a little bit of nighttime play with it. But the Freedom Munitions ammo running pretty good. Generally eating about anything I can throw in it. I've shot Winchester White Box, CCI Blazer. Um, <laughs> I mean, federal offerings, I've shot a Gila through it, I've shot hand loads, a couple of different types of hollow points, and I generally haven't been able to get it to choke on, uh, on much. Now, granted, 165s, you know, has to be a lot of things really in place for those 165s to run 110% reliable, but not too bad. I got one more mag of them, run a little bit more, and then uh, we might turn out the lights for a while. Not too bad, so see, transitioning all the way to the left, all the way to the right. It's a really pointable gun, very lightweight. I do like, you know, the lightweight nature of it. Pretty cool. Little Tyrant 9 doing a good job on this thing, pretty quiet. Not crazy about the length, though. It is a very long can. I might end up getting one of the little Omega 9Ks to kind of offset a bit of that additional length that we're getting right there. Not too happy about that, but maybe with that extended four in that I was talking about, might cover that up and kind of give it a little bit lower profile too at the same time. All out. All right, well, we had a lot of fun shooting the uh, CZ there. We are going to go ahead and uh, pull it apart for you here. This Scorpion, I'm telling you, very high quality gun overall. I've been very, very happy with it. Uh, we're going to begin by removing the suppressor. It's a tri lug, so we're just going to take twist. That pops right off. We're gonna leave the mount in place, quite simple there. All right, we're gonna pull the stock off. For that purpose, I'm gonna to try to just use a nine millimeter cartridge to depress this plunger right here. All right, push up, stock comes off. And guys, for your SPR conversion, that's literally it. It's just this little plunger, push it in, and there's your stock. Disassembly for field stripping is awesome. You take the uh, charging handle, lock it all the way up to the right like this, okay? and that locks your bolt to the rear. Place the weapon on fire. Take, uh, push right there on that little, little guy right there. You got a captured pin, your lower. <clears throat> this one's dirty as heck. Pops right out. You can see it's a very, very modular trigger design. One thing that I really love about the design of this gun is the very robust ejector. It's got a humongous ejector. And when you pull it out, you're rewarded with this just perfectly accessible screw that holds the ejector on. So if you snap an ejector, it's so easy. Just swap it out and there it is. Nothing to it. Um, I haven't really had the guts out of this thing yet and, and played with the mechanism itself too much, but I imagine it's a pretty modular mechanism overall. Mag catch is very robust. The mag catch can be uh, 
you know, access from either side of the gun, so it is a truly ambidextrous uh, firearm. The safety can be located on either side. You can get it, get it in either side, mag release, and then your charging handle, handle can be swapped out. If you want to take the grip off, which I'm not going to do, uh, you would just loosen this uh, screw right here, and it's actually got kind of like a slot it rides in, and you pull back on it, and bam, it just pull, pulls right off. Um, to take the bolt out, it's really easy. Relieve the tension off of the uh, charging handle. Let it, let it go forward a bit. Kind of cheat it back a little bit. Just grab that bolt. Lift up. Pull it right out. So you can see a very, very stout, large bolt. Lots of mass. Uh, very robust extractor, which I like a lot. It's got just a huge extractor. I can't imagine anything ever giving any kind of problems. You know, I just love the fact that you can just break this sucker apart, throw it in the ultrasonic, and off you go. It's just an awesome setup. Um, very modular setup. The charging handle can be swapped out simply by pulling this pin out. I'm not going to do it. And you just change swap it over to the other side. Not a big deal. Uh, optic, obviously, we are going to go ahead and pull the uh, T2 off. You can see, uh, you know, this LaRue mount's pretty nice. Uh, and guys, this thing is just so lightweight. There's a lot, like I said, a lot of polymer in the overall construction of the firearm, but you don't really get the feeling that it's cheap, you know? And I, I think CZ really has a lot going for them with this gun. This, they really hit a home run here. I mean, this is definitely one of my favorite guns. I mean, I, I know talking about when we did the five guns, uh, the top five guns videos where we talked about uh, top five nine millimeter SBR candidates or, or top five nine millimeter, you know, sub guns that this is definitely number one. I mean, it, this CZ uh, has a lot to be proud of with this gun. And uh, I'm not just saying that. I mean, they really did a great job here. All right. So the bolt goes back in. Don't let it smash your finger. Go ahead and lock it to the rear. Pretty much reversed, uh, you know, order to assemble it. Make sure that, yep, your charging handle is locked to the rear. Make sure this pin is pulled all the way out. Your lower just kind of works its way back into place. Okay. All right, our stock mechanism, slide down. Push that plunger in. <laughs> now you want to talk about light and handy, iron sights. I mean, that little guy is just a dose of, ooh, I don't even want to say, but all right. Another thing we're going to look at, we're going to look at the, see what this trigger breaks at. We got a Lyman trigger pull gauge here. I picked this up through Brownells. Great little unit. Let's see. That registered it. Nine pounds, five ounces. Let's try again. It's kind of a nine pounds, 5.2 ounces. Let's try again. Eight pounds, five ounces. Eight pounds, six ounces. eight pounds, five ounces. So it's got a single stage trigger that has, you know, breaks at about 8.6 pounds, which for a military type trigger is definitely acceptable. I mean, that's kind of what they're going for here. Um, the take up is very smushy with a lot of pretty discernible points where you think it's gonna break, but you're not sure. So it, it's pretty much your typical military trigger. What they were going for with this thing was keeping it safe and simple and effective they wanted you know to make sure they did that so you know the thing about the scorpion it, it's just a really awesome modern type firearm that just lends itself to so much fun this this has been a really awesome gun to own i love it uh, i've been very very happy with it so far i don't think there's really too much that i might not have mentioned uh barrel length i want to say i'm not going to say because i'm probably wrong but i want to say it's under 10 inches or, or right at 10 inches but it's got a relatively short barrel. Um, also, one thing that I didn't mention, the construction of this firearm. Now, I, I, I don't know if I'm putting my foot in my mouth here or not, but 
one thing I could definitely say about this is that this system would lend itself quite well to easy caliber conversions. Now, I've never pulled the barrel on one of these, so I don't really know what's involved in actually removing the barrel, but the bolt you can see is just easy as pie to get in and out. The whole lower here is completely modular, so that pops out. So if they had some type of different, uh, you know, magwell or a different magazine they wanted to run, I mean, they could totally do this in a 45 ACP, no problem, with a few minor geometry changes, obviously, bolt, barrel, magazine, but I think the recipe that is present here with the Scorpion is certainly a winner. And uh, I'm very impressed by it. It's, it. They should be proud of this gun because they did a really good job with it. And uh, I, I have to say, I'm not crazy about the uh, 18 by one thread pitch on the muzzle, but I tell you what, it, it's not that big of a deal. Guys like Manicore Arms are doing a great job of getting some of those adapters out there. Um, you know, the factory backup sites are usable. The rails are to spec. Everything locks up really nice on the rails. Um, it's great. So I tell you what, we are going to, I got my T2 off of here. We're going to put a Comp M4 on here, an aim point, with a PVS-14 from Armacite on here. It's in a LaRue swinging mount that swings out to the side for day and nighttime use. We're going to get this thing set up for night vision use, and we're going to make it night and get out there and do a little bit of night shooting with some hush ammo, have a little bit of fun and run around with this thing because it just begs to be shot like that. I tell you what, let's make it night. All right, and it's nighttime. So we're gonna run the CZ Scorpion uh, suppressed a little bit here with some night vision. We've got Armasite PVS-14 set up in a LaRue mount that actually is designed to allow the night vision to swing out of the way when you're not using it. So that makes this whole setup here day or nighttime compatible, which is kind of cool. But we're running the Armasite PVS-14. Of course, we're gonna rock it into place. Uh, aim point, uh, Comp 4, M4, Comp 4. Uh, we've got a Surefire KM2 that has uh, both white and IR light. So we've got it on IR mode. We're going to light up a few targets. We're going to run some 165 grain hush ammo. Let's see what we got here for just a little, little nighttime creeping rig here. All right, so you can probably see that Surefire doing a pretty good job. That's the KM2. All right, I'm going to turn it on and let's just light up a couple of things. Look at that, smack that gopher. He's probably hard to see. All right, we got a coyote target down there. Couple of headshots there on the coyote, not bad. All right, one more mag here. You know, we're not terribly far away. We're only about 30 yards away, but this type of, uh, of setup here is pretty dang awesome when you consider all of the implications that something like this could have. Everything from personal defense, um, hunting purposes. This is a very, very handy setup. We uh, mentioned earlier in the video that the lightweight of this entire platform here is nice. Um, yes, I am throwing a bunch of stuff on it. This is kind of a configuration that a lot of people may not be running because it is a little bit on the bulky side. But just, you know, despite the extra weight we're getting from the optics and the flashlight and the suppressor, it's still something that you could probably carry eight hours a day if you had to. And I, I think that that's a kind of the charm in something like this. This hush ammo is definitely doing its job. Let's uh. Give it a try. We're going to pick up the pace, shoot a couple more things. And I tell you, man, this this gun is definitely one of my, if not my favorite, nine millimeter platform. It's, this thing is just great. Ha, ha, ha. 
<laughs> Man, I tell you, I'd, I'd almost be inclined to go run a nighttime subgun match. It almost makes you want to sanction a subgun match that's held at night just so you could go out and shoot this thing at night. It's just so much fun. So I'm going to kill my night vision here, flip it out of the way. Now, if I wanted to put this thing back into daytime mode, no big deal. You twist this bezel on the end of the Surefire here. All right, it's got a little lock ring. Give it a twist, turn it. That puts it into white light mode. Uh, I can turn the intensity on my red dot back up to where it's visible with the naked eye. And when I hit my Surefire, I got regular light. I'm not going to do that too much because I don't want to blow out the night vision. But we're back in daytime mode when we do that. So this is truly a day and nighttime setup with this PVS-14 being able to flip out of the way. Whenever this PVS-14 is looking down the site on this aim point, I'm not changing my zero. And that's the beauty of having something like this. Now, granted, some people, now, you know, the T2 micros, the smaller optics, you know, those things are really hard to beat. But this little setup here is a lot of fun to play with. So... I hope you enjoyed today's video. We tried to mix things up a little bit. We've never done anything quite like this, so we wanted to try to add this element into one of our videos. And uh, I tell you guys, the Scorpion is a winner. I love it. It's been so much fun to play with. I'm looking forward to probably gonna end up SBR in a second one maybe. Uh, knowing Chad, he'll probably pick one up. So we'll see how he ends up setting his up. Maybe we'll revisit this video. Maybe we'll take him out to a little bit longer range because I know in this video, we were kind of keeping it to up close and personal ranges here. But we might take this thing out to some obscene ranges. Who knows? Thank you for watching today's video. Thank you so much for your support. It means so much to us. And uh, we really appreciate it. We'll catch you next time. We're on the way.